Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of Coffee and Careers. I am joined today by the Disability Studies and Community Inclusion faculty. Very excited to talk about this minor. It is really, really awesome, and um, you're going to hear some really great stuff about it. So very excited to talk about it. I'm Erica O'Toole, Assistant Director in the Career Development Center, and I am the liaison to um, our Education and Human Services College. And I am joined by Shay Dawson, Dr. Shay Dawson, and Dr. Joe Del Hero. Very excited to have both of you on today for this week's episode. Um, and as we do every week, it kind of feels weird that it's at 1.30 on a Friday, but um, as we do every week, we talk about what's in our coffee. I am actually still finishing my coffee. So um, I have coffee with pumpkin spice creamer because we're you know entering the fall season, so I have to bring out the pumpkin spice again. So um, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Shay to introduce himself. Hi everyone, I'm Shay Dawson, Assistant Professor in Recreational Therapy, as well as the new Disability Studies and Community Inclusion Program. Um, I have been a big coffee drinker, but believe it or not, I gave up coffee about a week and a half ago. <laughs> I know, I can't believe I'm even functioning right now. <laughs> uh, but, I, usually, <laughs> I usually drink coffee all day, but I have successfully uh, given it up and I, so I'm drinking water right now and I have been drinking something called Ticino, which is like a chicory root tea, which has been pretty good. So not as good as coffee, but <laughs> but it's been okay. Nice. Um, I'm Joe Del Hero and I am um, faculty in counseling and special education. I'm an associate professor in um, special education and also an advisor in the Disability Studies and Community Inclusion minor. And I um, I do drink coffee, but right now I'm having tea and it's a berry tea right now, but I usually like chai tea. But I, I do recognize like in the fall, the pumpkin is, that's my oh, favorite. Yeah. So I'm yeah. really excited about the new um, pumpkin spice creamer. I, yeah, I'm a little jealous, Erica, kind of want some right now, but I should have prepared ahead of time. So oh, good. just happy to be here today to talk about our minor. So yes. And I know we were just talking before we got on, but so excited to have all of you back, all of the students. It's like such a different vibe on campus. So nice to see you all walking around campus, see you in our offices, see you all in the classrooms. It is just wonderful to have everyone back. It's amazing. Um, Shay, weird time to give up coffee. So uh, I know, very I mean, weird, very weird. <laughs> Timing's everything, Shay. I know, I know. I should have waited. <laughs> So anyways, I am very excited to talk about this minor because um, just so many different things you can pair it with. And so I'm, I'm just excited for our students to hear about it. So um, either of you want to take this question, but why a disability studies and community inclusion minor? Yeah, I can start and um, Jodell fill in here, but I, you know, I'm just kind of thinking back to our first meeting, actually, uh, three years ago. I, you know, I, I arrived on campus and I was interviewing with the former dean and she's like going through all of my background. She's like, you really need to meet one of our faculty members, Jodell Hero. And and literally on my interview, they had said, Jodell's doing all this great work and uh, is interested in disability studies. So once I arrived here, um, other people had had mentioned that like, hey, you you two should probably talk because you, your, your passions are similar. So Jodell reached out to me, we grabbed coffee, and I think we talked for about an hour and a half about starting this minor. And uh, I came out of that meeting really excited because I had been really wanting to start a minor like this for, for several years uh, at another university. And um, so when, when Jodell you know, had met with me and we had talked about it, and she had already done a lot of work to get this thing going, I was, I was pretty excited about it. Yeah, it is exciting, and I think, um, you know, I, I started working on it when I arrived at CMU in 2013 um, because I'm just passionate about disability and particularly disability studies. And so um, I actually heard about Shay from my students um, who were taking his course and my course at the same time and said, you, you really should probably talk. <laughs> and so, so we did. Um, but the reason I think for me, uh, disability studies is so incredibly important because um, you know, disability is the largest minority group that anyone can join at any time. And when I start my courses with that 
that quote, the students are, are it, it really causes you to pause for a minute and really think that, because we don't actually think about that. We don't walk through life thinking that it could just happen to us at any time. And earlier, Erica, you said, you know, it pairs with a lot of different majors and disciplines. And I would say it pairs with all of them mm -hmm. because it, there's just not, um, there's, I can't think of any situation that you may not encounter someone with a disability or become disabled yourself. And so I've been a special education teacher almost my, well, my entire career. And um, I, disability studies shifted my entire perspective about disability and it made me a better special education teacher, but it's also made me just a better human being um, in the way that I think about disability. It's not just about school. It's not just about K-12 education or PK-12 education. It's disability doesn't stop when students graduate. And so it, it really makes you think about our world and how accessible our world is and how inclusive it is. And that you know, when we think about disability being the largest minority group, but we don't actually think about making things accessible, it's really, it, that's interesting. So um, my hope was to, to engage our students, our undergraduates, in really thinking differently about disability and how it, how it um, aligns with their, their future profession. Yeah, and I think statistically, it's just, it's really astounding if you look at the data on how many people have disabilities. Um, you know, I, I met with a, a professional that's working in public health and disability for the state of Michigan, and they just uh, have some survey data that came back on how many people in the state of Michigan have a, a diagnosable disability, and it's at 30% in the state of Michigan. So nearly one in three people are walking around with a diagnosable sort of disability, but we often don't think like that, right? Uh, most of the people I ask, like, how many people do you think have disabilities or what do you think the largest minority group and nobody ever says disability no. um, so you know if you think about it uh, if you're in business or if you're re really any profession or professional is gonna be working with the general population and one in one in three one in four people are probably gonna be touched by disability in some way mm -hmm. so it makes the the minor really applicable uh, in in a lot of different ways yeah and I think it's it's also annoying knowing that disability isn't just visible. We have, a, we have a tendency to believe that that accommodations and accessibility is only important to people with, you know, vision disabilities or, you know, physical disabilities. And it's understanding that, that there are a lot of invisible disabilities and that that impacts um, the lived experience of people with those disabilities. Absolutely. And I really love how you said you start your class journal because people, you know, you don't think about that, that at any time it could impact your life at, and, and anyone in your family. Um, and so I think that that is what's so important is that maybe sometimes you don't realize that until it does affect you in a direct way. But um, it's amazing how many ways this can connect to so many of our students and so many majors, literally, like you said, every major this can fit into. So um, I, I love that we're, we're talking about this one today. You know, Shay and I even talked um, once about, you know, when we when we hear students thinking about, you know, architecture or, mm -hmm. you know, um, types of, of engineering and in, in, in spaces, we think about, well, how would how would their um, inclusion in this type of minor impact the way that they think about how they're going to design space or create space and make it accessible? And, you know, I've had I've been teaching these um these minor courses as part of the university program for a couple of years before the minor was um, approved. And I've had students from a lot of different disciplines. And what's interesting to me is how often they'll say, you know, like my grandpa is a wheelchair user and I never thought about our house not being accessible and, and we want to celebrate, you know, big events mm -hmm. together. And we can't do that in our house because it's not accessible. So it, it's things like that. We just, this minor will raise people's awareness of those things. And once you know those things, you can't not know that anymore. So it does Absolutely. influence the way that they proceed in their, in their discipline. Absolutely. I was just thinking about that. My dad had ALS and, um, you know, not to get too personal, but I was thinking the same thing. You know, I came from a fashion merchandising background and I never would have thought like this could pair with me. 
but then seeing my dad go through everything he went through, there were so many things that could be designed that could have yeah. helped him. Um, and so even something like in, in those types of fields, you know, fashion, merchandising, yes. interior design, yes. there's so many yeah. different things that you compare with it that you don't think of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You know, when I worked uh, my, my previous job working at Bradford Woods, Indiana University's Outdoor Center, we'd run all these camps for kids with disabilities. And oftentimes, you know, we'd be working with them in the cabins, getting, uh, helping them to dress and whatnot. And they'd oftentimes say, these shoes are just not designed for me. I, you know, I, I really shouldn't have shoe strings. And so if you have shoes that uh, have Velcro or things that can slip on and off, that's great. But oftentimes those shoes also don't look the most stylish. So, can, right. so can you make them stylish and functional? Absolutely. You know, and, and most people would never think of that. But there's just so many ways that um, disability touches these different professions as you as you start to uh, dissect it and, and really unpack it. Absolutely, for sure. So, what does disability studies mean? And what is community inclusion? Because I think taking those two things apart, you know, maybe students have some questions about that. And then why did you guys decide to put those two ideas together? Yeah. Do you want to take disability studies first and I'll do community inclusion? Sure. So okay. disability studies is more like the theoretical approach and it, it's um, an interdisciplinary field. It works, it investigates and evaluates and enhances um, Western society's understandings of disability. Um, because disabled people continue to be the most marginalized and oppressed group of people in the world. And disability studies actively seeks to dismantle systemic ableism by promoting an understanding of disability as a natural part of the human condition, not something that's bad or something that, you know, we should actively avoid because it's not always, it's not bad. Like, and it taught, disability studies really has a more prideful approach to disability and just um, focusing more on making the world more accessible. And when we make the world accessible to people with disabilities, it's a, we make it accessible to everyone. So if we, if we bring that lens to everything that we do, we automatically increase um, our, our inclusion of, of people and our accessibility. So disability studies is, I think, it's just a really broad way of thinking about disability that's not, it's not just education, it's everything. It's thinking about, you know, political implications and economic implications and, you know, healthcare. It, it, it really crosses every single area because like I said, disability doesn't occur in a vacuum and it doesn't occur in isolation either. So. Absolutely. Yeah, and community inclusion is really including people in various walks of life within society and actively sort of um, seeking to do that. So if you think about different areas that you might want to participate in society, it could be a student going to school. Uh, it could be K through 12 or college, uh, but it also might be someone joining the workforce. Um, other areas that you uh, oftentimes don't think about, the recreation and leisure uh, areas are really important. I'll tell you a quick story uh, that really highlights kind of community inclusion. I was working with a parent. I was talking to it, and, and this was a dad, and his son um, had spina bifida. And he had told me, he, has, he said, Shay, you know, I really kind of grieved, um, not really the disability, but I, I had thought in my mind, I really wanted to watch my child play sports. And I was really looking forward to going and watching him play. Uh, basketball. And so I grieved that for many years until they found an adaptive sport clinic in Indianapolis. And all of a sudden they got on this team and he's on this wheelchair basketball team and they're really good and they're traveling around. And he said, it really hit me. He said, he almost got tears in his eyes. He's sitting in the stands with all these parents of kids with physical disabilities. And he's like, I'm here watching my kid. And, you know, I never thought this was possible. Uh, and so that's community inclusion, you know, um, and it's also the, the purest form is getting people with disabilities mixed in with people without disabilities for equal access in all areas of life. And so I think combining the two is is um, innovative in a way because the students learn theoret theoretically what is disability studies and all the great things Jodell is mentioning, the statistical you know background behind it. But then they also start understanding, well, well, what do we do to make a change? How do we become a change agent in the world and not just talk about it, but actually put something into motion? And, and that's one thing I really love about the disability is just blending those two together. And my hope is that we do have students that will take this 
and they'll take their major and they will design that shoe that's gonna be accessible, but also trendy, right? Um, they're gonna be an entrepreneurial uh, business major that starts businesses that uh, have owners that have disabilities, things like that, that are really gonna be um, on, the, on the cutting edge. Yeah, and I think, you know, we, we have a lot of disciplines that focus on disability. And traditionally those come from a very medicalized perspective that we're going to treat the disability or fix the disability or, uh, you know, develop a, an individualized approach for addressing it. And, and while that's okay too, disability studies actually looks at it a little differently in that it isn't about fixing or, um, you know, remediating any type of disability. It's actually about, um, em empowering people with disabilities to lead really full lives and feel included in communities. And part of that is, is really, um, dismantling ableism. And we have, a, we all are ableist in a lot of ways and, and without even thinking. And so one of the things we focus on in, in the courses that I teach that align nicely with what Shay does out, you know, when we are preparing them for community inclusion is that, um, you know, it isn't about non-disabled people helping disabled people. It's about us living in shared space and and understanding one another better. So one of the things that um, I think is, if I ask students like what they take away from one of the courses that I teach, um, I think it's just really critiquing what we value in our world. So for example, we have, we place a lot of value. I teach a writing intensive course. So that's why I'm going to pick on that for a minute. Like we place a lot of value on the written um, expression, right? Being able to write a really, and you know, solid paper and, and, you know, cite our sources. And um, so we place a, a whole lot of value on that, but there are a lot of people in the world that are, aren't, can't write like that. Um, but that doesn't mean they don't have anything to say or that they um, that there's an, another way for them to express themselves besides writing. And so um, we we actually um, do a couple of readings and a, a, a video about us, uh, an individual who's nonverbal. And the assumption was that they were cognitively or intellectually impaired. And the reality was they were not intellectually impaired. They just didn't weren't able to communicate verbally and that's what we tend to value. So the assumption was that they weren't intelligent. So it's really kind of just, um, you know, systematically deconstructing all of those beliefs and assumptions that we have. And those are the, th those are those moments when students are like, I never even thought about that. Yeah. So that's, I think pairing that kind of idea with, then they actually go out in the community and, and, you know, really in, apply it, I think is what makes this minor powerful. That's awesome. So I think we kind of talked about how this, this minor applies to really all majors, but what type of student might be interested in the new disability studies and community inclusion minor? Yeah, there are a lot of different students. I actually really enjoy looking at my class list before the class starts each semester. Um, it, because you just have really no idea where these students are going to come from. So I have a finance major in one of my classes right now. I have um, a handful of communication science disorder uh, majors that would like to, to go on to become speech therapists. We have, um, I've had a decent amount of event management, uh, people that really uh, want to work with the public. They want to put on events. Um, mm -hmm. They they may want to put be a wedding planner, and they want to understand how to work with a client that might have a disability or um, somebody that's going to be coming to the wedding that has a disability. Uh, so it's varied. Um, you know, like Jodell had mentioned, engineering's a really good good one for this as well of how how to design uh, fashion merchandising. We've had a few students there, so really all walks of life across campus. And um, and I was telling my students actually yesterday, it's one of the things I enjoy about the class is just the perspectives that they have and how they're taking the things that Jodell's mentioning and they're, it, they have this aha moment, but the way they apply it is usually to what they're learning in their other classes in their major. Mm -hmm. And so the students have a lot of different things to say and we learn from each other, which, which makes it a really kind of rich uh, learning environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would just add to that, that 
what I'm finding semester after semester is I have students in my class with disabilities, invisible disabilities, yeah. and they say for the first time in their educational career, they feel like they are seen, you know, and that um, and valued and that it's OK to disclose that they have a disability because, you know, that's that's the, the space that I try to cultivate in my classroom is that this is a safe space and we're going to talk about disability from a, a very positive perspective and that if we can't, we cannot dismantle ableism if we if we don't destigmatize disability. Yeah. And so we talk a lot about language and, you know, how they'll they will hear special needs all the time. You know, they talk about kids with special needs or adults with special needs. And we talk about well, what does that actually mean? And and if if we're really referring to disability, then, then why aren't we using the word? So we talk a lot about how euphemisms aren't aren't useful um, in in deal in thinking about disability and and actually making any sort of real positive change. Like and it also continues to stigmatize disability, which is not you know, we want to destigmatize it. But I think for me, that's probably been one of the most um, the most important things for me is hearing CMU students say that I have a disability and I feel seen and I, I'm so happy to take a class about this so I can learn more about it for myself. Absolutely. That's, I mean, that's absolutely amazing that our students are feeling so comfortable. Mm -hmm. But I think that also says something about both of you as well as faculty, that they feel that comfortable with you to talk to you about that. Um, and one thing I also wanted to mention, you know, as we're talking about what majors pair with this, sure, there's the majors that have already been paired with this. It's a fairly new minor. But I think the most important thing to talk about here, too, is that students could probably come and talk to both of you mm -hmm. if they have ideas. You know, there's probably majors out there so far or minors out there, majors out there, sorry, <laughs> that haven't really been paired a whole lot with it and maybe um you know students can come talk to you about it i think both of you have great ideas in this whole area so um you know i i think that that's what makes this unique as well is that um there are so many different ways that students could pair with it and both of you always have really great ideas with that as well so yeah we talked about journalism and you know mm -hmm. broadcasting and and how you know the way we write about disability matters so yeah, you're right. It there are um, a lot of majors that students are you know are pursuing right now that would pair nicely with this that we haven't even talked about. Yeah, yeah. I, love, I love talking about it, so they can come see me. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> broadcasting is a good one. Uh, in my class, I do a lot of uh, references to pop culture, yes. and one of the things we look at is just how um, the news likes to sensationalize everything. And, you know, so one of the things that's a bit damaging to, to folks with disabilities is we're always looking for them to be an inspiration to us. And so if you ever watch the news, you'll see this all the time is the stories are always meant to be inspiring to people without disabilities. And so when you listen to folks with disability students in the class or, or people within the disability uh, movement, you'll you'll hear how they don't really want to be an inspiration and uh, how that can be damaging. So the, the broadcasting majors or journalism majors, I think um, have a strong role to play in how they present disability. And so we talk about a lot, you know, there's not many options out there to watch a movie or a documentary or a show where you just learn about everyday life of someone mm -hmm. with a disability where they develop the character and you get to see everyday life. Um, but when that does happen, it's it's really enlightening. And so mm -hmm. I show up a documentary called Murder Ball. Sounds really terrible name, but it's it's a quad rugby rugby um, documentary on the Paralympic quad rugby team. And the students are shocked because it's one of the first times they've ever watched something real about disability that's just real and it's a person and it's you know and, and it's like, oh, this was really enlightening. Um, so yeah, I love the broadcasting and journalism majors. That was a good that's a good point, yeah. Jadelle. Very interesting. So we've already been talking for a good amount of time. I, time always flies when I'm talking <laughs> with you both. Um, but I really want to get to the study abroad program because it sounds so, so interesting. And I think a lot of our students would love to hear it. So could you tell me a little bit about the study abroad program and then also maybe some alternatives for students that aren't able to study abroad? 
Yeah, I can talk about the study abroad trip. So there's a new uh, class called RPL 312, Disability in Southeast Europe. And this is a faculty-led study abroad trip that I've been uh, leading for a number of years. When I uh, worked at Indiana University, I actually started a trip there with a colleague that's now at Temple. And then when I came to CMU, um, I really wanted, this was a priority to really start this here. So we've already um, taken one trip. And then of course it was canceled due to COVID last year, but we are approved for 2022. Um, this is a fantastic trip where we travel to Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, Slovenia. And uh, we uh, look at disability uh, in Southeast Europe in this sort of post-communist, uh, these post-communist countries um, that sort of formed out of the former Yugoslavia. And we talk about the civil war that took place in the nineties and um, the fallout of that, and, and how does that impact people with disabilities today and the social systems over there that either support or do not support disability well. And, and we see um, a variety of programs, some super cutting edge, innovative programs that are doing some really amazing work with uh, limited resources. And then we see some programs that it looks like you're stepping back into institutional life in the 1940s in the United States. And so we compare and contrast those in those countries, but we can compare and contrast all of those programs to the United States as well, um, because we're very similar in that we have some really great programs here, but we also have some programs that um, are not so great. And so we're, we're talking about that for three weeks together. Uh, typically there's about 12 to 13 students that, um, that go with us on the trip. Jodell and I will actually be going together uh, this summer. So. Uh, she'll get to go uh, and, and check it out for the first time. Uh, but it's a it's my favorite class to teach for sure. Um, and more learning gets done in that three weeks than you know an entire semester of of classes. So um, it's a fantastic trip and and really looking forward to it. That sounds amazing. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Absolutely. Yeah. That sounds incredible. I mean, if I was a student, I'd yeah, that that sounds like an amazing experience. Yeah, it's it's been a good one. I, I've taken uh, four different groups in four different years. And um, what's also really neat is the students really get to know each other over those three weeks and you get to know them well. And so when you have them back in your courses, um, one of the side benefits is the amount of learning that takes place with those students. And then those students also, we tend to see them become leaders because they've gone into this super novel experience in these countries that they never thought they would go to. And then you just see their confidence and their self-esteem go up. And a lot of these, these students end up becoming leaders when they come back in the classroom and out of the classroom, which is really fun to watch. How cool. That's so awesome. Well, thank you both. I mean, we're getting to the end of our time here and I've just loved learning about this minor. I think our students probably have loved it as well. Um, and I'm sure, I'm hoping you'll get lots of students coming in and talking to you guys about the minor because, I mean, what a great, great opportunity to pair this with so many different things. Um, any last ideas or things that you would like to tell our students that might be listening? Well, the only thing I would say is that, you know, if, if for some reason the study abroad thing is not, um, you know, accessible for, for a student for any number of reasons, then they um, could take the Disability Studies capstone course, which then is more, it focuses more on the Disability Studies field. And then it takes all of the knowledge and information that they gained throughout the entire minor, and then they actually apply it in a, in a disability related research or service project. So, and that project aligns specifically with whatever their, their major field is. So, awesome. yeah, so there are, so our, our capstones, we have a couple of options yeah. for students so that they feel mm -hmm. like the minor is really, you know, that, that it culminates in a really interesting and engaging product, whether they get to go study abroad or they get to actually do a service project. So. Yeah, the last thing I would say is, you know, if you're interested, reach out to Jodell uh, or myself. Jodell uh, advises uh, last names A through uh, M, and I advise the students with last names towards the end of the alphabet. alphabet. So shoot us an email. We'd love to chat with you and 
uh, talk to you more about this dynamic miner. Absolutely. Thank you both so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about this. We thank love you. talking about this. Yeah. Thank you for having yeah. us. Anytime. Absolutely. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everyone who's watching. Um, we hope you have a wonderful Friday and a wonderful Labor Day weekend. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.